Joff, thanks for coming on the show, mate. It's uh, it's awesome to have you on here. Yeah, it's good to be here. Um, can't remember the last. Well, geez, can't remember the last time we've seen you. Actually, when did I, I reckon? Look, I actually was thinking when I came here. So, 2016 was my last year. You broke through into the team in 2016 here in Sussex, but you were in you were in Sussex before years before that. What year did you come over? Maybe what, two years before that. Yeah, maybe two three years before that. Yeah, can you can you remember like you are a vastly different person now, like just physically, like you Actually, are. Actually, you know what? That last message I sent on my phone is twenty fourteen. Really, twenty fourteen. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Fair enough. Like yeah. so. You're va- physically, you're f- f- so much different from when I remember seeing you come breaking in, into the scene around here. Can you kind of remember like how you were as a person before you, when you, when you turned up at the gates here at Sussex and you were bowling in the nets and like impressing every, everyone that was around? Uh, it all seems like a blur now, to be honest. It was so long ago. Like, honestly, I can't even remember. Like a few memories I have in the early days was staying like in the, in the clubhouse, like, Right next to the pub, yeah. you know, like even even now you look now the pub's totally different, and the house is the house been knocked down, but um now nah, you still remember you remember being with Salty Dan Duran, Craig Kachop, all those guys that most of the guys went on and they played. I think everyone's still playing some sort of cricket now, but you know those early days, it was just raw, still learning your talent, still yeah, still finding your way. Yeah. So, yeah. Did you come over with, like, thinking, I'm going to play county cricket? Did you come over? I, never, I think I ever asked you that. Like, did you, did you, I know you were around and, like, that would have been something that, I guess it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, but, like, were you coming over, like, hell-bent on, okay, Sussex is a team I want to play for. I know you're really cl- close with CJ. Was that this the place you wanted to play? Yeah. And even, like, no. You know, I've never had the urge to leave, you know. Mm. Um, you've come and gone, you know. Some of the most of the guys that had been around when I first started, and not much of the guys left. But, you know, I still want to be here. <laughs> um, I guess I guess because you, you you have some good memories, you have good times. Like, I can't imagine, like, going into another gym or I can't imagine training at another set of nets. You know, it's just weird think, even thinking about it right now. Yeah, mate, it's it's awesome. And also, people that might be watching the video, they might notice there's a there's a dog in the house. We've got Griff, <laughs> so I don't, Griff, know, I don't know if you can see him. <laughs> I don't can, know if we can see yeah, him, but we've a, got we've a, got Griff, which is Chris Jordan's dog. But you are mad fan of dogs. Yeah. I'm a huge dog fan. The one thing I actually don't know the breed of dogs that you have that I've seen at your your house over in Barbados. Like, what what breed is that? The American bullies. Right. Okay. What are they like? Like, what they what's their sort of their temperament? What do you love about them? To be honest, they do whatever you're doing. They, yeah. they, they're not fussy. They don't need loads of exercise. To be honest, they're pretty lazy. To be. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're pretty they're chilled. I won't say lazy. They're chilled, man. Um, whatever you're doing, they're, they're more than happy to do. Yeah. But yeah. I'm just taking a the piss. They're not, they're not lazy at all. And some of them, actually, some of them can run like, like really long. I've got one that's fairly like chunky. Honestly, she run the whole day for you. Yeah. Whole day. Let's effort that as well. Wow. Do you br- ever bring him over? Like, you ever thought about bringing him over? Uh, one of them, he was born here. He's just home because um, I was on the road from November last year. So now that I'm back for a little while, I'll bring him back probably close to summer out and then probably send him back. Well, it all depends on 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 what I'm doing, where I'm at. Yeah. 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 So how how you feeling at the moment? Like, how's, how's your body feeling? Like, where you at right now? Probably about half a half into bowling like normally again, I guess. I think I just passed the rehab phase. It's just building up now. Yeah. yeah. How does it, talk, talk us through how it's felt, mate. I, I, I mean, I've been, I've been injured. I've obviously, I had an injury that ended my career. I know sort of how tough it can be, but is it, what's it been like for you? So, sort of getting fit, playing and then grabbing another one. How, how do you stay positive? I uh, actually, funny enough, text Patrick this morning <laughs> just saying you were coming on the show and he was, uh, I said like, man, he, he's been through it at the moment but Patrick came straight back and goes, and he remains so positive. Yeah. So how, how have you done that? How have you managed to remain positive through this moment? I think every injury I've, or interview I've seen you talk about your, in, your injuries, you've been positive. So I'd, I'd love to hear about so how you're, what you're thinking and, and where your mind goes with it. No, you just you just gotta get seven dogs. That pretty much that pretty much um 
fixes most of it and then just going home regularly as well so that's what I, that's what i've been doing like when you're home you don't have to worry about anything you don't have to worry about cricket you don't have to worry about media you can do whatever you want to do at your own pace as well so i get up on mornings deal with the dogs head to the gym and then you got the rest of the day to do whatever you feel like doing so you know that's the biggest thing about it you know you're home with, with your family your friends they're like, not saying you don't have well don't have much family in the uk anyway but you know the, the bulk of my friends and family are on barbados and you know that's just where you're comfortable you know it takes it takes so much off your mind you don't even realize well, I, I know i realize but it takes a lot off did you ever have a moment when you've had downtime where you've like been constantly thinking about cricket or have you always had the space to clear your mind by doing those things those routines being around family friends the first year the first year that was the first few weeks i was probably injured yeah and then gradually it just it just f- fades away like being in barbados you're already five hours behind england so like if cricket's on like sometimes you might miss it sometimes you might only catch the back end so you know like out of sight out of mind yeah, that makes sense. Like, I didn't actually think of the time zone being <laughs> being yeah. a thing that could actually help you out. But um, I saw you've actually been doing Pilates a little bit. Yeah, I did it mostly when I had my back because I guess with, with the elbow, the like, Pilates is neither here nor there. But with the back, you know, it helped a lot moving, stretching, you know, just getting the back muscles firing again. That 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 was that was why I did it. Yeah. And like now, like it just. So I don't go, I used to go twice, twice a week, three times a week, but now I just go once a week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just um, one thing, you might want to bring the microphone just a little closer, just it might help. That's it. So when you were growing up in Barbados, uh, I want to know who your idols were, like, which is weird enough because someone asked me this on the, a recent podcast. Mm-hmm. So I came back and forth from Barbados, got a lot of friends out there when I was younger. I was actually a West Indies fan before I was an e- England fan. I was gutted when I found out that I couldn't play for West Indies when I was younger. <laughs> like it was something that, uh, as a young kid, did you did you tour with Sussex? Um, did you play in that? You didn't play in that game nah, at Kensington, I didn't, no, did you? No, not the the one dayers like with the probably the pro squad when the pros were there. Yeah, no, nah, I was in Australia when uh, that was going on, and that's uh, when like Fidel was. I remember heat. Fidel almost took Liz's his head off. That's I it. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, and I think. Amjad Khan was playing and Dwayne Smith hit one of the flattest hardest sixes I think of who did he play for seen. he played for the Barbados team or did he play with, with um, Sussex who did he play with Dwayne, Dwayne, Dwayne was, a, Dwayne was uh, on Barbados squad yeah he was um, he was playing for them but my idols growing up were Ambrose and Walsh mm-hmm. but who were yours I, would, I didn't really have any idols um, it's different in Barbados like everyone's just outside playing cricket obviously you watch the guys on TV but you never went from TV into the road and said, I want to be just like him. Like, you were so focused on just playing and trying to get your mates up and trying to bat. Like, you never really had time, though. Like, I was telling someone the other day, like, I just don't understand, like, autographs and, like, selfies and stuff. Like, obviously, like, people are great sports people and stuff. But back home, like, you just, it's, it's not something you think of. It's not something, yeah. it's not, it's just not the norm. It's how, just do you, not the norm. how do you find that stuff now? How do you find like the, the the media attention, the autographs, the selfies and things like that from your side? Because it's different here. As it's different in the UK. So yeah. now, because you're here a while, so you you learn to accept it. As you say, like for me, seeing it is a little bit weird. But I think after a while, you know, like, it means a lot to the kids. It means a lot to every single person that you've signed, uh, you've taken the picture, they... Like, seeing them walking off and looking in their phone and smiling or seeing the kids showing the the, the kid next to them their signature and he's saying oh mine is bigger than yours or <laughs> he spent longer signing mine than yours like it means a lot to the other people so it's fine yeah it's fine yeah but it is it is a different thing like especially when i uh, have been over on the island like you see cricketers that have played international cricket and they're just sort of literally liming out around everyone and and they're just not it's just different it just yeah it's just different um i think probably in the last couple of years actually you know what i still don't think i've seen much kids home actually so like autographs it mostly it will it will mostly be the appearance <laughs> but 
a kid in the Caribbean is hardly ever going to answer for a signature. Hardly ever. Yeah. They might answer a photo, but signature, absolutely not. Yeah. I was always the thing, me and my brother, we were always like, don't, oh, don't be that person. Don't just don't go and up to it. And then if I really wanted one, I remember seeing the Australian team on, on mm -hmm. Acra Beach in Barbados and I was like pushing my brother, like, you go do it. But I was like, yeah, just it's a different mindset. But um, when you were younger, what, how, how did you, how did you develop as a youngster? Like, I know you were at Pickwick Cricket Club. So what was your, how did you sort of like get into cricket? What was your sort of stepping stone in? And I guess another question would be, how, when did you sort of know, like, this is something I really want to do? Yeah, uh, step school cricket. So they all like primary school, secondary school, they all have their cricket programs. Um, I was lucky enough to go to a really good cricketing school in secondary school. And we won, we pretty much won everything. We won on the 13, on the 15, on the 19. We won on the 19 twice, you know. Yeah, we were just, we had a really good batch of cricketers. Um, my best mate, he played for West Indies on the 19s. Actually, he was probably the only, him and Aaron Jones, I think they were the only two that they played at a really high level. But the rival school was Comba Mare, And I think most of their boys, they played some sort of age group or path to cricket for Barbados, you know, like a lot of them guys went on and played first class cricket as well. I don't think, yeah, the, I think the only person from our year that, that played first class cricket was Aaron Jones and myself. The the, the guys from Common Mayor, I reckon probably about six of their boys have, 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 have gone on and played. So, yeah, I think I knew when I was about probably right after on the 19 I had a feeling that I could I had a chance of being a perfect well of trying to be a professional I thought it was I thought it was good enough I know my mum definitely thought it was good <laughs> enough as well so uh, that was half the job already done I just had to convince some coaches somewhere that you know I was worth taking a chance with but they didn't they they you didn't stay in that West Indies setup um, nah, when, when you were uh, older I, what was that like when they sort of said no? What what did you did that set a fire in you? Did yeah, how did really, you feel not then? Not really fire. You see like you see like patterns, you see I think you you get an idea of who's gonna play, who they like, who Yeah, you, you had a feeling you you pretty much knew. It was pretty obvious, you know, who the who the people are that they would invest their time in. And, you know, not our feelings or anything. You know, I was I was a bit lucky having a British passport as well. I obviously had a British passport. So, you know, when that time came, I just said, I just explore my other options. And, you know, luckily it was the right decision. And, you know, I'm forever grateful for leaving. Yeah. When you came over here, I, I know you came really close with John Lewis and, mm. and you ended up living with him. Do you live with him for a year? Two. Two. Mm. Wow. Mm. John is like one of the, he, he was, godfather for all of us here and uh he's a phenomenal coach mm -hmm. what did your experience with him what were there any things lessons that came out of that your time there or, and maybe a shift that you had from your time with john honestly not really you know um what i would say is that he welcomed me and del and Cordell, we, were, we were with him for those two years and we were literally part of the family uh, <laughs> i still think his <laughs> I think at one point, because his son was pretty young, I think at one point, <laughs> uh, he went to school one day and they had to draw their family tree. And <laughs> he drew <laughs> he drew me and Del in the family tree. <laughs> and the teacher message, not message, when she came to, when Anita came to pick Georgia, uh, the teacher said, you know, they are, there are two black kids in the photo. And Anita was like, yeah, no. And then she just picked up George and left. <laughs> so he saw it. He saw it. Like, it was, I mean, it was so funny. But yeah, I reckon George thought we were his brothers or cousins at some point for, for a little while. But um, now nah, John, we can talk cricket anytime. He was never really pushy. He never said that I had to do this. I had to do that. And, you know, it was just, it was just banter. I remember just before I played for England, like a few years before I played for England, you know, we sat down and we were looking at stats because John was one of the first people to play T20. He was around when T20 just yeah, came out. So. Big old baggy shirts. Yeah. You ever see them? Uh -huh. Wow. So I kept asking him for his figures and stuff. So um, 
I told him I'm gonna play. I told him I'm gonna play more games for England than him. I think I passed him in ODA. I passed him in T20s. Uh, I think I passed him in. I think I passed him in tests as well. You probably have passed him but in tests. He he is adamant, and to be honest, he is right. I don't think I come close to his first class stuff. I mean, it's it's mental. It's what six hundred. 80 on wickets I think many, it's, it's, it's ridiculous like too the amount many. of games that he had and uh, three quite of them were at Gloucester as well and they went to Gloucester and I was like there's no way a seamer's getting them wickets here so yeah it had to be something different like and he had do you have Walsh or Ambrose playing there I, I, can't but, um, I think it was Ambrose I want to say yeah Curly, yeah, yeah, yeah it's definitely Curly, I wanna, yeah I want to say it was him yeah just, it was Curly, but he said he, he, he speaks so highly of him as well because yeah. he was the overseas when he was there and I think having him there did a lot for his cricket and his development yeah as well yeah no mm -hmm. he's i mean he's i attribute so much for him around like how i thought about the game as when he came on the scene mm -hmm. there was he's got this beautiful blend of and i think it's a really good and you can correct me if you think something different with coaches but i think coaches can have this really good blend of being hard on you when you need to when you need it and then put an arm around you when you need it mm -hmm. and then have that banter when you need it and and be able to not have almost a one track mind on everything if they're one personality all the time it can be really really difficult yeah that's perfect actually and he's got a bit of red miss when he's playing football <laughs> I got red he, miss when he's playing as well he's, he said some of the funniest <laughs> things i've ever heard on group build he's the most angriest man but also he's probably one of the slowest like he's angry but he's not going to hit you with a bunker, is he no <laughs> i think like, <laughs> what are you gonna do you're gonna blow his shin off like yeah. more than lately yeah, yeah. but yeah do you ever get angry? You, when do you, do you ever find yourself getting angry on the field? I think the, probably the, the one time, I never get angry, but I think there was one time he probably nudged me. I remember when I first got, I got my hair done against Kent and he was like, the boys are laughing at you. They're laughing at your hair though. So he was like, you should go and show them. <laughs> I said, all right, cool. No problem. I <laughs> came back with like six, seven for, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, other than that, nah, I don't really get angry. No, nah. mm. you you're attributed all the time for saying so calm, and mm. obviously World Cup final, like you were super calm. Mm. Is there anything that you do in preparation that helps you stay calm? Is there anything that you telling yourself or anything you're focusing on, especially in the moment when you're under pressure? Nah, I guess not just me, but I think most of the guys back at home and just like that. So they same with CJ. I don't think you'll ever see CJ, like. I think I've seen him upset once and it wasn't even cricket related. Yeah. Um, Where do you think that comes from? Like, what, what do you think creates that? The culture? Like, they're just the, as you're growing up? Because here, a lot of athletes I deal with right now, they're like riddled with fear of failure. They're riddled with the fact that they are fearing doing badly. Like, and the fact that if, if this doesn't go right, then it's going to say terrible things about me and like who I am. And I just don't feel like you or CJ have that. So I'm so curious as to see, like, where do you think that, that comes from? I don't really know. But for us, it, like, we can't ever see ourselves as failures, you know? I think we, we already kind of broke away from, you know, a whole different country, coming into a new country and finding your feet and, you know, doing well for ourselves. So even if we fail here, it's still not a failure because we're here if you get me yeah so you know we got a lot to be grateful for even like no like even the last few years haven't gone to plan you know i've never lost hope i've never gotten angry like everything happens for a reason i reckon everything mm -hmm. happens for a reason and that's that's what you go on you what you have to believe yeah if people can hear it it's griff's griff's hits the snooze button and he's already having a snore so he's uh he's yeah. passed out already. It used to it used to be worse than that, but um it's been I think he's gone a little bit better as he gotten older. Yeah. <laughs> I actually jumped in the bed last night, I didn't even know he was there till this morning. Really? Yeah, you don't know. Like it's hot if, as well, like dog in the bed, like hot right now, it's warm. Nah, I got a fan. Oh, you're right. Then. I got a fan, I got a fan, and I think you only know as well when you try to pull the blanket and the blanket doesn't move. Like, okay, he's on the bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you said about like always having hope and believing, mm -hmm. and like we've mentioned about staying positive. Right now, the England selectors like haven't. They're, they're, they're still ruling you into the team, mm. which is amazing. And to have not played in a long time and still have that fa faith put on you, how does how do you take that? Like, does that put any pressure on you? Do you feel like that there's that there is added pressure when when they're sort of still backing you and you haven't played in a while? 
I won't say pressure. The only people that only cares about that kind of stuff is the, the media, because mm. then they're gonna hype you up the whole time, saying, "Oh, the long awaited combat," and if you don't take five for return, they're gonna say that <laughs> you're a failure or something like that. But um, nah, most of the teams, you know, they they give you grace. You know, like if you're out for a while, they can't expect you to operate where you were, like where you left off. Mm. So like most, almost every single team has been really understanding and you know everyone's just as i said just waiting waiting for me to come back and come back properly so you know you, you do want to come back and you do want to do well literally straight your first game back you want to but sometimes it doesn't always happen that way yeah do you think there's a element of as you've gone older maybe a bit more wiser like do you are you are you are you, are, are you um giving yourself that sort of less expectation to do what like well straight away or do you con is it for you i just want to do uh the best i possibly can all the time doesn't really matter a bit of that and a bit of giving us cutting yourself some slack that like you did you did all the hard work did all the rehab you did everything to get back you know the cricket will take care of itself but the hardest part is actually being back yeah you excited about it like you you just feeling good now with you actually yeah, got the ball uh, in your hand like honestly how's yes. it feel? It's really yeah, same as gone. Well, I won't say gone, but of this is probably the second time I've did rehab and built up and come back now. So like it's still the drive there, but I won't say it's as intense. Like, you know, like I just know that when I come back, I, I know if I stay on the park for one year, I know I'm gonna do amazing. So I know I just need to come back. So I don't think too hard about it. Mate, that's it. Yeah. With uh with skills wise, mm. is there anything you want to get better at? Is there anything that you're looking to develop? Something in your game that you you know you want to you've you've potentially want to up a little bit. To be honest, um, probably just getting the opportunity with the bat. You know, I guess basketballs are wrong now. So if there's ever a time that you might get promoted, it'll be <laughs> no. But you know, I f I feel like I feel like I got pushed away so a little bit, like performing for Sussex like. To be honest, so like one year I had what 60, 60 wickets, 500 runs. And uh, then going into the, well, it's hard. It's hard to bat any high in Like, uh, anyway, I just feel like I just want to get a good, I just want the coach to bat me. Where would you, where would you like to, like, where would be your place you'd like to bat? Like six and seven, six or seven. And just, just be given the, like, the freedom, the opportunity to say, it doesn't matter if you fail or not, we believe in you and we, we see what you can do and yeah. just have a season there. Like Definitely in white ball, I definitely do get a chance to, to buy a bit higher, especially depending on the situation. But I feel like in red ball, I've got a lot to offer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So would you, like Stuart Broad's obviously done, like mm -hmm. that obviously night hawk, night hawk role. Mm -hmm. Do you reckon that's, that, have you ever done Night Watchman? Like, have you ever come in and done that sort of role? Because there's an opportunity. I don't, like, want, I, I don't, I don't want to get out. Oh, that's the thing. I, <laughs> I used, to do, I used to do it and you're like, geez, I'm a sacrificial lamb yeah. going out there. Like, mm -hmm. But then everyone used to, and I don't know whether mm -hmm. this was just lip service mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. They're just pushing you out there going, mate, you, you last the day. Mm -hmm. you got you got runs tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, you're probably not wrong. Like you can bat and they'll be the top order. And I, I remember playing Derby here at Sussex and like first three wickets to go in the day with mm -hmm. the batters and not mm -hmm. me. And you're like, well, I've got a chance here. Uh, sure enough, I get out next ball. I think but I did it. Did I do it once? I think I did it one single time. Actually, did I? Actually, no, I didn't. But I remember the, the one time I was still fairly young and I came in at like nine. Because back then, like, Jesus, CJ was bad in that eight. So, like, we have a great team. It's a strong team. So, actually, yeah, Aj, Aj was night watch when he got out. So, we came off. So, I was next in the next day. And I remember the guy started bringing all the all the fielders in and someone because brony was batting with brony brony was like on 60 and i think it might have been matt coles you know from kent when he was at kent i think it was matt coles it was like all right guys let's get this bunny this this wrap this in is let's get this bunny out <laughs> and brony said i could hear him say you wait bit you wait and Probably about two hours later, me and Brony were still batting. I think Brony, Brony got on 99 actually, got LBW and I came in not till I got, what, 60? So like literally like 
15 minutes in all the chatter went as soon as I got a few boundaries away I like, couldn't hear anyone anymore <laughs> did you when you were a kid did you want to be uh, did you always want to be a bowler or did you start wanting to be a, a, a batter because I know there's stories of international cricketers that have ended up that being bowlers over, yeah. and then swap uh, over they yeah. start as openers well, were you the same no mm. or was it always bowling was it always bowling no it's both I wasn't even a, I wasn't even a fast bowler I only used to bowl fast and tape ball so, so you could bat <laughs> you could bat again so they how it works back home is if no one gets you, you bat the whole day. Yeah, you can you literally you can bat the whole evening till cricket is over. Yeah. So they do from the time you get out, you're bowling because you want to bat again. Yeah. So that's that's pretty much how I started out bowling, bowling fast. Have you spent with baseball being a, a big thing at the moment? Have you spent much time around Brendan McCullum? Like, have you got to chat with him and mostly WhatsApp? To really, be honest, yeah. he I think he messaged me like two days ago as well. Yeah. Right. But since I've been injured, him and Marty, they have been they have been in contact the whole way through. Wow. Yeah. The That's amazing. The whole way through. I reckon Is this just to check in on you? Like just to check how you're yeah, doing? Yeah. Like is uh, that uh, like how you how you feeling? What's going on? I felt if I badgered him enough, I feel he would have taken me to Pakistan because <laughs> we had uh, we had the pre test camp in November last year and it was doing really well then. It would have been the big risk taking me because it was only a few months after being back, but I felt like if I bothered them enough, I feel like would have let me. But um, nah, the, both of the coaches are really good, you know. Like neither of them were around in 2019. Like they weren't around when I was playing, so both of them have taken the jobs when I was injured. You know, it, it's not really well. It is their responsibility, but it still isn't. Yeah, but it's still good to see that. Although like. So then they're, they're, they're still like checking in and have some sort of interest. Yeah, there's loads of love there for you. Just real interest in how, how you're getting on. Look, mate, I want to take a bit of a, a right turn with things. And the the report that came out in cricket, the ICEC report um, that came out and said that there was a lot of elitism, racism and um, sexism in, in sport. What What's your... What's what, in cricket? In cricket, yeah. yeah fair enough. What what has been your experience in in coming into sport um, with whether it's racism or elitism? No, I only, only had one little bit of racism in New Zealand. That was what twenty nineteen again, I think. But other than that, I've never had anything. I don't. I don't think you would get much in, in the it's different man I don't think anyone would be bold enough to do it in the UK I mean it definitely happens but I don't feel that like anyone would be bold enough to do it at a cricket game maybe for definitely football but mm. in cricket I've never really experienced anything other than what I experienced in New Zealand and then like Kane Kane sorted the situation out in a matter in a matter of hours as well in New Zealand yeah I think New Zealand's probably the last place you expect, you expect it to happen as well. Yeah, yeah, which is actually wild to think about just with the culture and and. But uh, I think my my opinion of it was the fact that I I think the report, while there will be the findings will be true, that sport is only a reflection of society, mm -hmm. and to say that there's not elitism, sexism, and racism in in society would be false to say. Um, I but, but for one thing. And it's hard saying as a, as a white guy mm. that my experience here at Sussex, mm. coming into a changing room with people from Caribbean, from India, Pakistan, from New Zealand, uh, all different religions, races, I actually think cricket is one of the best sports for breaking down some of those boundaries. And well, I think most of the issues lie outside of the game. That's the reason why I'm even here. You know, um, I was actually supposed to go to Northampton. And CJ called really? me. CJ called me the night before I got on the train to go out, and he said I oh, spoke to the coach, and he said come down, because obviously I had CJ salty. I can't say the salty black to be honest. <laughs> but it was CJ salty Dell Tamar. I had other mates that were playing in, in and around the Sussex League as well, so you felt more comfortable. Like to be honest, Sussex. So this is literally we had <laughs> like almost like five black guys in the team at one point, you know. So it's good. I've seen Kent, Kent, they got Deebs, they got uh Tawanda now as well. T Honestly, Tawanda should have been at Sussex. I don't know. I yeah. don't I don't know how he ended up at Kent. Who's was it Eastbourne? Yeah, I mean, I'm telling College. you, I do not know how we missed him. Cause he's gonna be really, really good. Really, really good. But um off the back of what you said earlier, I feel like 
sometimes as black people, we don't even want to say, even if we do experience something racist, we don't want to say it because then some people will say it as an excuse or say it as they can, as an easy way out when it actually happened. Like even I thought, I thought long and hard about even saying anything when it happened in New Zealand. Like it literally sat down. I remembered when I got into the change room and I was like, Phew. should I let it slide? Like, <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes you don't you don't even think to to take any action. Mm. Yeah. And 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 I know you're close with um, or you've spoken with Marcus Rashford, mm. and like after that, him Sancho and and Saka had such bad. I don't think San did Sancho miss. I don't think San they they were abused online. They they had it, they did were, he miss? I can't remember. I know oh, mate, Marcus I, miss San um Saka miss. I can't remember if Sancho did, to be honest, because they was there. They, 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 but what my point being is mm. that they've received a lot of abuse online, mm -hmm. and and you've been pretty good at calling it out. Mm. Uh, and I, I love seeing people calling it out. I think if people are putting something online and they're brave enough to go and create, write that online, <laughs> but they and, never and, use, they never use their own profile. They never use the profile yeah. picture. Like they're brave enough to do it, but not properly. If you, if you're brave enough to say it, like show you, show yourself. Yeah. Show yourself. Yeah, it's important. Like, that's, I think it's so important. People are just calling it out, and people saying, oh, "I don't know whether to just put their profile out there, throw it out there, like make it real, like show them what for what they're they're saying and doing." I think the way you've done it is is um is awesome. Look, I'm really conscious of time, and I'm so thankful for your time giving it. There's a couple of things. I think you were. <laughs> we had to be had to be that coming in at last minute. Yeah, yeah. Uh but although. Even though that machine's coming past, like best outfield in the country right now, for sure. Like that, that's the that outfield is unreal. I'm walking out there. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But before we go, in, like there, there'll be young cricketers listening to this. There'll be people that want to have the success you've had playing the teams that you're playing in. Uh, what advice would you give to a young bowler right now with the experience you've got, been in the teams you've been in all around the world? What would you give for them for whether it's their body, their yeah. skills? Um, yeah, what, what advice would you give a young young player? Probably strength and conditioning is probably the biggest the biggest thing, especially now. I think I've been I've been lucky and kind of unlucky. For such as I played literally almost every single game for four or five years, so I feel like the better you take care of your body the better your body will take care of you. So I feel like you, you need to put in all the hard yards outside, like away from actual batting ball because that's the way you, you will stay longer on the part and it will make you more robust. It, hope, well, I don't know. I see some really, really strong guys, especially like cricket guys in the gym 24-7 and still get injured. So I, I, I don't know. It's but, such a unique thing, isn't it? Yeah. Fast bowling. Like, I, I mean, I was... I used to wait for this machine to go by. Can never trust the creek ground. But yeah, well, it's, it's just hard. It's, I think once you find the balance between S and C and then cricket, I think that would be really, really good, really important. I think being an S and C coach in cricket is one of the hardest things. Like you go there, you learn all the right things to do, and then you're like, this sport is just endless. Man, like, there's been there have been fractures for. This is like two years. So since I've been injured, there have been so many more fractures, you know. People, and not just in England, people have been going on all over Boomer, Carl Jameson, um, yeah. you know, different countries. Everyone's going. So uh, I, I really don't know. And everyone's got good SNC coaches and stuff. These is international guys. That, uh, I, I don't know, man. I'd like, to, I'd like to know a little bit more about Schedule? it. Schedule? Probably that as well. Who knows, honestly. Who knows? From a skill point though, like because it's it's so hard to blend, get like resting, recovering, and then being able to develop your skills. I actually always say to people, the hardest time to develop your skills was pretty much when I turned pro. Mm. Like putting in all that work early on was so important. And then when you become pro, it's like you're, you just you got to pride yourself it. on recovery, like and not being yeah. in the nets and not training because you don't want to damage anything. Mm. How do you balance that right now for yourself? And and yeah, I guess. Is there anything, any way that you've sort of found of keeping your skills up with rest in your body? To be honest, I never had to. I think probably no. I think I'm at the stage where rehabbing, like, 
I feel like every ball that I bowl now is important. Whereas before, like I could bowl a whole day, I could I could bowl an hour at training. You know, you never think, you never think, you never think about it. You just for me, I was just always bowling, always batting, always playing cricket. But I feel like now, I have to chill a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I definitely need to chill a little bit. But before, I never, I n- never thought that you know I could get in. I thought I was invincible. When yeah. I was younger. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I used to have that as well. And then yeah. I think one of the best things that ever happened to me, and I know you had something similar, was mm. I got injured young. Mm. I got injured when I was 16. And then that was the thing that, for me, gave me the reality of, okay, my body could be something here that could let me down. I don't yeah. want it. Uh, obviously, mm. I've got my condition and things like that, but mm. I don't want that to be the case. And just went and put in... A coach, coach said to me brilliantly one day, he was like, put in the foundational work that, you need right now so that you don't have to do it later on so that you're not right now at 25 Mm. 26 27 28 whenever you get there like you're you're having to put in that work that's the same thing you asked me earlier you know if there's any part of my game that i want to expand no like i've did i've did everything i needed to do like from like bowling ways variations back of the hand knuckleball i did all of that when i was young yeah and literally like cemented it as part of your arsenal. So like, no, and people ask if there any balls that you want to learn, like, no, I, I, not to say no, I, no, not to say no at all, but most of the slow balls or variations I do, I, I do have, yeah. I do have. You said about your mindset was like, you're a bit more, um, every ball means more. Mm. Like, so when, even when you're in the nets, like warming up, you're putting quality on that. And is that well, what you're doing now? Well, no, I'm saying I'm doing that. No, I said before, like, as you said, like, you just ball, you just ball, 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 ball. Whereas, no, like, after a few injuries, you know, like, everybody ball now is precious and important. It's hard to say what the right one is, though, don't you think? Like, if you were to say, back when I was a kid, if I'd put more quality on the every ball then, and maybe not bowled as, me- as much, would I be, hindsight. would I have fast-tracked my pro- progress? I, I think- Hindsight. When I- it's hindsight, I right? And, and, and I, I, can't, I get so many people who are not in the game or played sport be like, oh, well, what if you did this? And I'm like, well, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I'm here where I'm at because I've done what I've done. That, same way, okay. The first year that I played with the tools, I played three games. I kind of got like four wickets every single game. Me and Hobbsy, me and Hobbsy were bombing it for the tools, and then I got injured, got injured in my back. And I'm pretty sure if I kept playing that season, I would have got a contract 100%. Because mm. Chops got one as well that year. And they, I think he ended up playing because I, w- I got to the UK a few weeks before him. So I was playing. I was playing, I played like four games before Chops did. So like the last, actually the last game I played, Chops got like 80, like off of like 40 balls. Yeah, great player. But yeah, I was just, just say that to say like, you could say what if, like, you know, I could have, I could have said potentially I could have played for England a little bit sooner. If, if I played for Sussex my first year, I would have played first class sooner and then probably been on the radar like, as I told you earlier, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Everything happens Because you go the other way, like sliding doors moment, you go the other way, mm. you don't know whether you would have got injured sooner. Like there's so many statistics on I young players. I could have made my debut and I could have gone at sixes and got no wickets <laughs> and not played again for the rest of the season. So, you know, it's uncertainty and hindsight. So much could go wrong or so much could go right. Who knows? Um, I don't really want to find out. I'm happy with how my path went. You know, the ups and downs, they make you who you are because cricket, like cricket is not one of those predictable games. Cricket is so unpredictable and, you know, you're going to have bad days. You're going to bowl bad balls. And I guess the downs just teach you how to deal with them and quote with stuff. Yeah. How, how do you deal with if you have, have had a bad game? If you've not performed the way you wanted to, what, what do you do? Well, I, I never had a bad game twice. That's what I tell myself. And l- luckily I have never did. So... You know, it's okay to have a bad game, a bad day. And that's fine. That's such a good that's such a good outlet to have. Yeah, I think never, so I've many never had a bad game twice. And this year is testament to that. Um my first fifty over back for England, South Africa. Mm. My, uh, had my worst wor- my worst uh my worst set of ten ever. I went for like seventy. I never even went for se- I don't think I don't think I barely went for 40 in the World Cup. I went for 70. And you know what happened the very next game? At my worst figures and my best figures, literally four days apart. 
It's crazy, isn't it? Madness. I think so many and like so many Madness. kids will just m focus on the bad one, mm -hmm. and then they forget what they do because it, it clouds your judgment on the day when you could potentially put in another good performance. Like mm -hmm. I'm always saying to kids, like or anyone, like as quickly as you think it goes wrong, like it can go right again. They, there's no difference in speed at which those two happen. It could go right just as quick as it could go wrong. Exactly. I saw that. I saw that for myself. So definitely believe it. Oh, mate. It's awesome. Look, you've been unreal, Joff. Like, thanks. And <laughs> Griff snoring away <laughs> in the corner. Like, I don't you, think he's sleeping, to be honest. I don't think he's just, think he's just chatting, just wants yeah. to, just to get involved. I always ask people just before the end of the show, if there's anything there, uh, whether it's a quote, a book, a documentary, a film that they have watched recently, listened to, or used that potentially inspires them, or mm -hmm. they found interesting. Yeah, is there one that you potentially have? Whether it's a a book, documentary, film, uh, quote that you love and live by, something that has inspired you. I just I guess everything happens for a reason. Um, I see sports documentaries, but I don't think I don't think that. I don't think any of them have really like like a hundred percent relatable. Like there'll there'll be bits and pieces, but I just I just I don't think I've seen that documentary that really wholeheartedly yeah. like resonates with me. But I I honestly I just live by everything happens for a reason. Like I would, I never question you. You might get upset for maybe a day or two about being injured, but I, I don't I don't think about it too much you know it's okay to it's okay to feel how you feel but just know that that's not the end and yeah. even if it's the end like it's for a reason yeah it's for a reason mate awesome um I really appreciate your time thanks for doing it it's been great catching up it's been great doing it being able to do it here mm -hmm. as well as Sussex so I appreciate it. and I'm I'm really excited for for what the next I guess 6 to 12 months is going to look like for you and I have no doubt with the mindset that you've got mate you're going to you're going to smash it never never had a bad game twice yeah. so um, good luck and uh, I, again thanks for coming on alright cheers thank you